exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. Welcome to Blue Christmas at the church at Ponson Highland. Today is Joy Sunday in the life of the church and in Advent. But when I think of 2020, joy is not the first word that pops to mind. There is so much pressure to be joyful at this time of year. But for all of us, most of us, it is difficult to be joyful this year. For some of us, this is a hard season, no matter what year it is. For others of us, we're missing the sense of normalcy, the sense of being close together with family, the traditions, the hugs, the gatherings. So this service is for you. For those who have lost someone, or for those who are just a little down in the dumps this Christmas season. Tonight, we will light four candles. A candle of grief, a candle of anger, a candle of worry, and a candle of courage. With each candle lighting, we will offer a scripture reading, a short reflection, 
and we will sing along together to a stanza of Silent Night, led by our wonderful director of music, Chris, who we have to thank for that rendition of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. At the end of this service, we invite you to light candles at home if you have them, or to hold a thought, a prayer, a loved one, a special need in your heart and lift it up to God as we light candles here. Now, will you go to God in prayer with me? God, you will find no fake smiles here tonight, no happy faces for the benefit of others, no artificial cheer. You will only find us raw, real, honest, broken, and brokenhearted. But you will find us turning our faces to your light. You will find us lifting our voices to your goodness. Grant us tonight a taste of your presence, so that we may trust that the God of all beginnings and endings hears our cries and cries with us. Help us to remember, O oh God, tonight that we do not lament alone. The first candle represents our grief at loss and heartbreak. Hear these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? The Word of God. How, how could one candle be enough for all the grief of this year? That is the question. If we lit one candle for every life lost, every postponed dream, every battered hope and burned tree, every final phone call and lost job, would there be anything left but flame? This season always reminds us of those we have lost, but this year the loss is so much more. Grief always tears open an empty space within us, but this year the emptiness feels too big. We're worried that it might wrap around us and we won't be able to find our way out, or else we'll simply fall in and be lost. Grief is so vast, and yet it is so specific. I'm missing the sound of a person's voice on the phone, missing a dish they made at family gatherings, the way their advice could always pick you up and help you find the way out. We grieve what we have lost, and we cry out because we cannot even grieve as we would normally. We cannot find comfort in loved ones and family traditions. We weep for the loss of income, the loss of relationships, the loss of routine and normality, and the ability to be together in body. We weep for the loss of trust that the world is a safe and good place. O oh God of mercy, if we shrugged this weight off our shoulders, would you hold it for us for a moment? Healer God, will you hem the edges of the holes inside us so we cease to unravel? Loving God, Will you shed tears alongside us, weeping for all that was and is no more? God of, of infinite grace, if we lit a candle for every broken heart, would there be anything left but flame? Or 
Would you swallow those flames, transmute them, and make of them instead a new star in the Bethlehem sky? The first candle represents our grief. As we light this candle, we bear our broken hearts to God, knowing that to be brokenhearted is to be alive, and that God's heart breaks alongside ours. We offer our grief to God with the lighting of this candle. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the unvirgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly The second candle represents our anger at unfairness and injustice. Hear these words from Jeremiah 8. We look for peace, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. The snorting of their horses is heard from Dan at the sound of the neighing of their stallions, the whole land quakes. They come and devour the land and all that fill it, the city and those who live in it. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored. The word of God. Do not tell me that anger is not welcome here. When the world as God dreams it does not match the world as we live it, when injustice and unfairness and violence persist, do not tell me that anger is not welcome. There is hunger in this world and hardship. When there are human beings with no choice but to sleep outside, when families must flee for their safety, when creation is poisoned, workers are exploited, when gay kids are homeless and trans people are murdered, and women are assaulted, and families separated, and black and brown bodies lie in the street. When we are experts at violence and amateurs at peace. When we cannot stop the ones we love from being hurt or stop ourselves from causing hurts. When we cannot undo the mistakes that haunt us still do not tell me not to be angry. Only tell me that anger is welcome, but for a little while. That anger may come to visit, but cannot move in for good. That it may blow like the wind, but not be planted in the soil. Tell me that we will not rebuke our anger or ignore it. We will greet it like a precious and holy friend who comes to visit, but it cannot stay. We will not hold on to anger too long. 
We will not grip it so tight that our palms burn and our skin scalds. We will not make it our daily bread or rely on it for fuel because we refuse to put poison in our own veins. We will not make a shield out of anger if it costs us the ability to love. Tell me that anger may wind through our souls like a river, but we refuse to build a dam and drown. We will release anger. We will let it float away on the wind. We will hand it over to God who will hold it for us until it is safe for us to come close to it again. Tell me that anger is welcome, but only for a moment, only until dawn. The second candle represents our anger, a gift that flows from the gap between the world as God dreams it and the world as it is. As we light this candle, we offer to God all the injustice and suffering that angers us. We release our anger to God with the lighting of this candle. Silent night, holy night, grief so now comes in manger bear, holds our pain in his holy care, joy at last to be ours, joy at last to be The third candle represents our worry. Hear now these words from Romans 8. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. There is a creature who walks with me through life, and I call her worry. Worry is there when I wake up and when I go to sleep. She is there in quiet moments. She intrudes on my busy life. Worry forces me to plan ahead. She helps me think through the possibilities. Worry keeps me safe, I think. Kind of like an angel, although sometimes she feels more like a demon. There are some days when it feels like I no longer guide my own steps. Worry no longer accompanies me, but leads me and leads me into dark corners full of nightmares and my deepest fears of the future. This year has fed worry, and she has grown strong. She keeps me awake at night and steals peace from me when I am not looking. She fills my mind with questions. What will happen if I get sick? What will happen if I lose my job? What will happen if my son is stopped by the police? What will happen if they ask me for my papers? 
If they ask me who I love, will I find a job? Will I be able to pay this month's rent? Will I stay sober? Will my kids be okay in online school? Now I worry that I worry too much. And I worry about what will happen if I stop worrying. God of calm and quiet, won't you fill me with deep breaths? Let me drink of your peace as it is cool water on a hot Georgia day. Fill my life with cozy blankets, warm tea, friends who listen, and a great book. Worry can be an ally, but I want you, Lord, to be my guide, not worry. I want you to hold me and lead me, not worry. Help me follow a star to where a child lays in a manger and remind me that nothing separates me from your love, not even worry. The third candle represents our worry. As we light this candle, we pour out upon God every worry, no matter how small, how unlikely, knowing that God accepts them all. We are reminded of the security of God's presence with the lighting of this candle. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. The fourth candle represents our courage. So hear now these words from Isaiah 65. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit the word of God. A poem from outside the field, planting a seed seems foolish, bent down in the dirt and grime, pawing at raw earth with sweat on your brow and an ache in your back to sow what you may not reap, placing the future into the earth as the sky grows dark and the year grows lean. Starting tomorrow, this seed is on its own. Then comes wind and rain and storm and tempest, the sun's dry heat like an open oven, icy wind crashing down like a wave. I can tend to my seed, I can guard it, but only life directs its path from here. And life, I know, is always beautiful, but rarely kind. From outside the field, planting a seed seems foolish. But what you do not know is that I plant myself here alongside this seed. One foot for hopes, one foot for dreams in the wind and the rain and storm and tempest in the sun and icy wind. My dream seed and I will reach out wide and see glimpses of sun and not just clouds. For life, we know, is always beautiful with courage to see it. 
What you do not know is that I plant myself here in the richest and darkest soils, perfumed with the dreams of a thousand generations, the hope that moved mountains and parted seas, nourished, renewed, replenished from a river that flows from a long ago yesterday to a great sea that only tomorrow can find. In the midst of wind and rain and storm and tempest, I find my next breath in this dirt, I find my courage. From outside the field, planting a seed seems foolish. Bent down in the dirt and grime, pawing at raw earth with sweat on your brow and an ache in your back to sow what you may not reap, placing the future into the earth as the sky grows dark and the year grows lean. But inside this field, I summon God's courage to bend and place a seed and dream. The fourth candle represents our courage. As we light this candle, we draw from God the courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, to share our feelings honestly and openly with each other, and to dare to hope in the midst of pain. As we wait through all our dark nights, we can remember God's immense and unfailing love for each of us and for this whole aching world, a love born in Christ on Christmas. And we remember all this with the lighting of this candle. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Would you please join with me now in prayer? God of love, in this Christmas season of anticipation mixed with confusion and loss, we need some comfort. We seek your presence to break through our loneliness. For sorrow is not the absence of joy, but a shadow that keeps it from view, a a scar on the heart, a, a limp in the walk that stays with us, even as clouds part and the experience of love returns, maybe to a life sobered, to relationships, though fewer, that seem to resonate with more depth. This is our need in this night. So we ask for your blessing upon all who mourn for the pain at Christmas time that seems sharper, deeper than other times. We remember the words of Jesus who promised comfort to those who mourn, saying, come to me all you who are struggling and carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest. Guide us now, Holy One, that we may move in still small steps from mourning to comfort. Help us to find the healing we need in the midst of our pain and order in the midst of chaos. Lighten our burden this night. Give us rest. And in our needed rest, O Lord, teach us to dream again. May we dream again of laughter that is contagious. May we dream of game nights and dinner parties with friends that we have missed Teach us, Lord, to dream again of summer nights and front porch swings. May we dream once more of the little things that bring joy, the joy that comes from the heart of God. 
So tonight we will light candles as a reminder that your dream for this world involves the end of all tears and a joy that overflows and is ever contagious. May these little flames that we light burn bright. May our hearts be open again to sing and maybe even to dance. May we laugh and love again. May we sow joy in a hurting world. May all this become acts of holy resistance. Lord, this is our prayer on this night together. And now I invite each of you to offer your own prayers of intercession, of loss and thanksgiving. We will light candles standing in for each of our losses, our worries, our fears. So you're invited to name your worry, your concern, put those in the comments, hold them in prayer before God in this time. And if you have a candle at home, light that there as we light these candles together and as we listen to song once again. You shouldn't be here tonight It doesn't seem quite right Here where the cattle sleep Here where they keep their sheep Here in the mud and blood and hay How could you end up in this place? You shouldn't be here tonight It doesn't seem quite right Here where the shots ring out Where everything's burning now Where there's a hundred words for pain How could you end up in this place? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us, love for us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, born into the longest nights. Emmanuel. You shouldn't be here tonight It doesn't seem quite right Here where the hurt is deep Here where the wounded weep Where there's so much we cannot say How can you show up in this place? Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us, love for us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, born into the longest nights. Emmanuel. In this garden starry night In our aching crying nights In this trembling tender moment Before we start to see the light dawn Emmanuel, Emmanuel God with us, love for us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, born into the longest nights. Emmanuel, 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 God with us, love for us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, born into the longest night, Emmanuel.
Be human, be kind, be both. 